Mm, nobody ever expects the Baldo. <laughs> okay, well, that was weird. But what's even weirder is that there have been criminal cases in the past where the people who were caught were the people that you would absolutely least expect to be breaking the law. And by the way, they did some absolutely crazy stuff. Here are the 10 most unsuspecting criminals that shocked police. Number 10 is the teen art thief. Move over Ocean's Eleven because teenage art thief Lawrence McCall was a real-life heist mastermind. In 1977, the 16-year-old Philadelphian skipped school to visit art museums and lifted an Anton Braith painting off the museum wall and dropped it out the window and later sold it for $300. In addition, McCall stole another 22 paintings that he fenced through the biggest art gangster Sotheby's auction house. Believe it or not, this financed his MTV Cribs luxury apartment, a triple black Oldsmobile Regency, and a whole lot of jewelry. Bling bling y'all, that's art money. Art money. A shooting is what led cops to his apartment who noticed the priceless works of art just hanging on the walls. Believe it or not, the FBI couldn't prove McCall stole the paintings, but convicted him of mail fraud and transportation of stolen goods across state lines. In total, they recovered over $300,000 worth of stolen works from the Deschamps Museum collection. Okay, I don't know if it was the kid that was a mastermind or if it was the art museum's fault for just being completely dumb enough for letting random people be able to steal priceless artwork. It just hurts my brain. Number nine is the cocaine coach. The St. Regis University Rangers baseball team had just lost in the Fall World Series in October of 2010 when the team's assistant coach, Ronald Rocha, got arrested for being part of a major cocaine ring. The U.S. Attorney's Office indicated that Rocha was transporting 20 kilos of cocaine from Joaquin El Chapo Guzman's cartel from El Paso, Texas into Denver, Colorado. It was there where it was distributed by street gangs, the trade gangster Crips and Northside Mafia. The drugs were smuggled in secret compartments in cars and trucks until a shipment of 27 kilos was discovered during a traffic stop. In total, the feds nabbed 53 kilos of cocaine, 35 pounds of marijuana, and over $650,000 in cash. Coach Shaw obviously ended up going to jail where he became someone's pinch hitter. You know what I'm saying? Shortstop, you know what I'm saying? Uh, bad things happen in jail. Number eight is Blind Justice. Gary Foster was your typical legally blind junior executive at a major multinational banking behemoth when he decided, hey, let's try this whole embezzling thing. Leveraging his knowledge of Citigroup bank operations from 2003 to 2010, the New York-based accountant channeled $22 million into his personal account, assigning dummy contracts to cover his tracks. The divorced father of two spent lavishly on various mansions, a luxury of apartment, including one across the street from a Citibank branch, bottle service at nightclubs, and a Maserati, BMW, and Gran Turismo for his hired chauffeur to drive him around in because he was, well, blind. An internal audit discovered Foster's large-scale theft and he was sentenced to eight years in prison. You know, hopefully before he went to prison, he ended up using some of that money to get a defense mechanism for his butt, because he's going to be sitting a lot in trials and stuff, you know? <clears throat> Number seven is a soccer mom pimp. What's happening? Big Sally here, big pimpin'. Most moms go to work or back home after dropping her kid off at soccer practice, but not Anna Christina. The Scottish-born madam ran a prostitution ring in New York City's posh Upper East Side with a roster of girls, including former Playboy Playmates, servicing high-end clients in finance, sports, and politics. Christina boasted that she made millions of dollars in her 15-year reign while raising four kids 
woods and rescuing pigs on a farm in Monroe, New York. She even claimed to have cops on her payroll, but was eventually busted for a single charge of orchestrating prostitution in July of 2011. Since Christina had no criminal record, she served only four months on a plea deal and later went on Dr. Phil to deny that she was ever the New York soccer mom madam. Well, we all know what can happen when you go on Dr. Phil. Remember the Cash Me Outside girl? Cash Me Outside, how about that? Now she's killing it with music and it's headaches. Number six is a one teen crime wave. Essex, England experienced a crime wave from 2003 to 2009 that totaled almost 1.1 million British pounds of stolen goods. Later, the town of Shelmsford had a 500% increase in crime that was not the result of the mob, but instead one prolific teenager named Bradley Wernham. After being caught, he ended up confessing to committing 660 crimes, including home invasions and stealing luxury cars, starting when he was just 12. Now you'd think authorities would throw the book at Warnham, but since he was just a minor, Judge Christopher Ball sentenced him to just 150 hours of community service. Oh, and you know, he also got a rent-free apartment. Yeah. But 19-year-old Wernham just loved to steal and was busted again just three months later trying to break into a house and steal a BMW and was finally sentenced in 2010 to five years in jail. Mm, he better be good at stealing other men's hearts because if not, he's going to end up as someone's boyfriend. Number five is the red-headed spy. High New York City society just loved the stunning late 20s red-headed Russian who ran her own real estate company, dined at the best restaurants, and partied at the hottest clubs. But that was just a cover while she and her friends gathered sensitive information and developed compromising material on policymakers. In June of 2010, this real-life Bond girl met with an FBI agent posing as a Russian official and was detained briefly before she she and her fellow spies in the United States were sent back to Russia in the largest spy exchange since 1986. Chapman, the femme fatale, became famous across the world, especially in Russia, where she posed that October in the Russian Maxim Magazine edition and had her own Russian TV show, Mysteries of the World, with Anna Chapman. Look at that, just become a spy and betray all your friends and you could get your own TV show. That's the lesson, right? Number four is the baboon carjacker. South Africa has always had its share of dangerous criminals, but one short, hairy gangster named Fred remains a legend in Cape Point, 70 kilometers south of Cape Town. This baboon was an accomplished thief, known for stealing food by breaking into cars, both empty and occupied, terrifying tourists. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of hungry. Mine, thanks. Fred even had his baboon troop trained like mob foot soldiers to act as lookouts and distract tourists while Fred could rob five cars in five minutes. TV host Mark Evans said that Fred could bite like a lion, run like a cheetah, and rule his troop like a despotic emperor. Sadly, the baboon operational group was charged with neutralizing Fred via lethal injection in March of 2011. Oh, and by the way, Fred's autopsy revealed he had been shot 50 times. So much for monkey business. Wait, stop, that monkey was really, really smart. Is anybody else worried that this is the beginning of Planet of the Apes in real life? No? <laughs> Number three is the Queen of the Pacific. Sandra Avila Beltran grew up Mexican narco royalty as the niece of Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, founder of the Guadalajara cartel. She became a key player in the Mexican drug trade in the late 1970s, even after both of her husbands and her brother were killed by assassins. She was called the Queen of the Pacific for smuggling cocaine into the United States with Mexican tuna boats. Yet, Sandra was not even on the DEA's radar that was until she asked American authorities in 2002 to help get her teenage son back from kidnappers demanding five million dollars ransom. She was finally arrested in 2007 and spent a decade behind bars in total luxury with jewelry, maids, and Botox treatments. I'm not gonna say break the law, but if you are breaking the law, don't go to the law for help. 
doesn't make sense. Number two is the four-legged vandal. The small North English town of Brampton in Cumbria experienced a six-month car vandalism spree back in 2014 that left the local police confounded. There were 10 different incidents of tires being slashed and completely flat in the morning. Look, it was so bad that local residents started installing CCTVs in order to get to the bottom of it, and the Cumbria police monitored countless hours of footage. That was until a sharp-eyed policeman, Simon Amos, caught the culprit red-handed, or pod. It wasn't rascally kids releasing their teenage angst. No, actually, it was a two-and-a-half-year-old border collie named Jess, who was chewing on tires during her daily walks. Jess had been hit with a car a few months back and was trying to teach other cars a lesson. See, dogs are smarter than you know. You think just because they go around smelling crotches and stuff that they aren't criminal masterminds. And number one is the Grandpa Gang. The biggest burglary in British history was committed by a gang of senior citizens. Their ringleader, lifelong criminal, 76-year-old Brian Reeder, used his senior citizen bus pass to get to the scene of the crime. After three years of extensive planning, they broke into the Hatton Garden Safety Deposit in London, England on April 7th, 2015. They were able to disable the elevator, climb down the shaft, and drill through half a meter of cement. Their take was 14 million British pounds worth of jewelry, gold and cash from 73 safety deposit boxes. But these analog criminals were no match for Scotland Yard's digital detectives who busted the gang using CCTV. The men, whose combined ages totaled 442 years old, were sentenced to a combined 34 years in jail. Whew, talk about bad grandpas. So that was the 10 most unsuspecting criminals that shocked police. And if you enjoyed this, remember to give it a big thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the little bell beside the subscribe button so that you never miss a thing because I release videos all the time. Thank you guys for watching and I'm just gonna go relax, acting like these old grandpas, you know, being in jail and whatnot. Bye. <laughs>